Question first. Observe the patterns of digits made from line segments of equal length. You will find such segmented digits on the display of electronic watches or calculators. So we have 6, 2 times 6, 3 times 6, 4 times 1, 2, and 3 times, 8, again, similar times. If the number of digits formed is taken to be n, the number of segments required to form n digits is given by the algebraic expression appearing on the right of each pattern. How many segments are required to form 5, 10, 100 digits of the kind 6, 4, and 8? Let's first understand the question. It says if the number of digits formed is taken to be n. So these are the digits. Here we have one digit, here we have two digit, here we have three digit of the same digit that is 6. Here we have 6 one time, two times, three times. That is what this line means. N represents the number of times a digit appears. The number of segments required to form N digit is given by algebraic expression appearing on the right of each pattern. So what are segments in this? Segments are these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So in order to make this digit 6, we need 6 segments. Similarly, for 2 digits, we need 11 segments. Why not 12? Because here we have a common segment that is used by this digit 6 and this digit 6. That's why the question is saying that we find such segmented digits on display of electronic watches or calculators. This we have observed very well in calculators. Similarly for 4 and 8. Now what does question ask? How many segments are required to form 5, 10, 100 digits of the kind 6, 4, 8? So it says that how many segments are required when we have to repeat this digit 6 5 times, 10 times, 100 times. Also, in order to construct 4, 5 times, 10 times, 100 times. Similarly, for 8. Now you have understood the question. So algebraic expression helps us to know certain things without actually drawing it. It would be hectic to draw these digits 100 times in order to calculate number of segments required. So algebraic expressions directly calculates unknown quantities now moving to answer first of all we will make a table like this with three columns these are columns one two three and we will write headings in rows these are rows in first column you will write symbol second number of digits and number of segments that we have to find and the symbol is six four and eight and number of digits five ten hundred five ten hundred five ten hundred because we have to find for each of the digits 5 times, 10 times, 100 times. Now for 6, we will use this expression. Because this expression helps us find number of segments for any particular number of digits. For an instance, for one digit, how many segments are required? 6. How we can calculate with the help of algebraic expression? Put n as 1 because we have to construct one digit. It will give you 5 into 1 is 5 plus 1 is 6. Likewise here. We have to construct two digits of 6. So we will put n equals 2. 5 to the 10 plus 1 is 11. If you count it, it is 11. Same has been written here. Likewise, 16 here because 5 threes are 15 plus 1 16. So now you've got the idea. Now let's jump into answer. Number of digits required to be constructed as 5. That is, we have to construct this digit 6 5 times. So we will put n as 5 in this algebraic expression. So 5 n, n is 5 plus 1. 5 has a 25 plus 1 is 26. Therefore, 26 set segments are required in order to construct this digit 6 5 times. Now for 10, 5 into 10 plus 1, 50 plus 1, 51. So you see, without drawing, we calculated number of segments required. Here, 100. So 500 plus 1, 501 segments will be required. Similarly, for this digit 4, the number of segments required can be calculated with this formula 3n plus 1 or algebraic expression putting n as 5 because we have to construct 5 times this digit 4 5 3 is a 15 plus 1 gives you 15 plus 1 equals 16 segments are required for 10 digits of digit 4 30 plus 1 31 100 times 100 into 3 plus 1 is 301 and now for 8, for single digit, this algebraic expression holds true. We have to calculate 5 times 
putting n equal to 5 here 5 5 is a 25 plus 2 is 25 plus 2 equals 27 10 times 5 into 10 plus 2 that is 50 plus 2 52 and 100 times 500 plus 2 is 502 so in such questions or in such day-to-day -day problems algebraic expressions are helpful that is your first second use the given algebraic expression to complete the table of number patterns so this is the table this question doesn't need any explanation because it is visually understood that what this question demands for here we are given with expression and we have to find the blank terms for an instance in first one we have to find hundredth and we are given some already found terms for an instance for first term we will put n as 1 2 minus 1 is 1 similarly for fifth 5 to the 10 minus 1 is 9 so we have to find hundred we have found here putting n as hundred in this expression for first part because we have going to find hundred term that is what will be hundredth number following this expression so hundred into two two hundred minus one is one ninety nine here we can write one ninety nine similarly for second expression has been changed it is three n plus two this one and we have to find fifth tenth and hundredth first finding fifth so put five here five these are 15 plus 2 is 17 you can do it in order to show for tenth 10 into 3 plus 2 32 for 100 100 into 3 is 300 plus 2 is 302 found for second for third again you have to find fifth tenth and hundredth this is the expression for n plus 1 for fifth 5 into 4 is 20 20 plus 1 is 21 for tenth term tenth into 4 or 10 into 4 is 40 plus 1 is 41 for hundredth 100 into 4 is 400 plus 1 is 401 then for third for fourth this time expression is 7 and plus 20 again we have to find fifth tenth and hundredth putting 5 in place of n so it will be 7 5 to 35 plus 20 is 55 now for 10th term 10 into 7 is 70 70 80 90 that is adding 20 to it for 100 100 into 7 is 700 plus 20 gives you 720 now for last n square plus 1 we have to find fifth tenth only because hundredth is already solved n square when putting 5 to it 5 squared it is 25 plus 1 is 26 and for the last 10th 10 squared 100 plus 1 is 101 so here we have shown directly you can calculate it your space required will be more but answer will not change this is second lastly let's revisit what we have learned from this chapter so basically what we have learned from this chapter is summarized here terms which have the same algebraic factors are like terms terms which have different algebraic factors are unlike terms thus we are taking example of like terms first of all 4xy and minus 3xy are like terms why because we have same variables x and y x and y having same power that is x here is 1 y here is 1 x again 1 y again one time but terms 4xy and 3x are not like terms although they have x similar but this term lacks y therefore they are not similar or in another term they are unlike terms second point the sum or difference of two like terms is like term always and how we perform it with coefficient equal to sum or difference of coefficients of the two like terms what does this mean this means that if we have this for example 8xy minus 3xy first of all they are like terms because they are having same variables with same powers so how we perform their sum it is simple you will take its coefficient coefficient is numerical in this case that is 8 and 3 they are subtracted so first of all we will subtract them that is we are left with 5 and xy that is same variables had it been like plus an answer would be like 8 plus 3 gives you 
11 xy and another very important thing which will be helpful in coming chapters or in coming classes is this pattern in geometry that we have learned from this chapter as well so what is it it is a quadrilateral because it has four sides one two three four because they are closed figures with straight edges here we have one two three four five it is pentagon again we have one two three four five six hexagon and the concept that we have learned in this section is the number of diagonals we can draw from one vertex of polygon of n sides is n minus 3. This is the formula, you must learn it. It means that number of diagonals that we can draw, take this one, this one, or this one, will be equal to n minus 3. That is, its sides minus 3. In this case, in this quadrilateral, we have four sides, therefore, number of diagonals we can draw is only one that is we can only draw one diagonal from one vertex that is from a we can draw to c not to d it will not be a diagonal diagonal is which connects any two opposite vertices here from a we can draw to two that is to d and c and with formula how we can calculate it like we have one two three four five so 5 minus 3, that is 2 diagonals possible from any one vertex. For instance, if we draw from E, it would be to E to B and E to C. Same is here. Now, check it for heptagon, that is 7 sides. We don't have. So how we can calculate mathematically? So it will be 7 minus 3, that is 4. Therefore, we can draw 4 diagonals from any given vertex. And octagon, 8 side, that will be 8 minus 3, is 5. So this is the important concept you must learn. Now, what is the number for a triangle 3? Well, it will be 0. Why? 3 minus 3 is 0. And if you take any example of triangle, consider this as triangle, you cannot draw any diagonal. Now, observe that the diagonals drawn from any one vertex divide the polygon in as many non-overlapping triangles as the number of diagonals that can be drawn from the vertex plus 1. What does this mean? This means that whenever any diagonal is drawn, if we consider all these three figures, we see that a diagonal divides the figure in non-overlapping triangles. That is, ADC is one triangle, ABC is another triangle. In this case, AED is one triangle, ADC is another triangle, and ABC is third triangle. Similarly here, we have non-overlapping. That is, they don't overlap each other. And how many such triangles are there? For this, we have also a formula. That is, it will be one more than the number of diagonals that can be drawn from any of the vertex. So in this case, number of triangles that are achieved are two. And how we can find it algebraically? That is, number of diagonals is one plus one. That is two. In this case, how many triangles are formed? One, two, three. Algebraically, we can find number of diagonals drawn from any one single vertex is 2, 1, 2, therefore 2 plus 1 is 3. From here, we can draw 1, 2, 3, therefore number of triangles will be formed as 3 plus 1 is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is what this section explains to us and you have to remember it because that will be useful in upcoming chapters and classes. With this, we are finished with the chapter of algebraic expression for 7th standard.